Hello again everyone, this is Vincent and this is episode 7 of the Constructor Engineer of the People walkthrough. This walkthrough will be on the divide by 4 counter and the 4 to 1 multiplexer. Just starting with the divide by 4 counter. This is another timing chip, but instead of being given a long pulse and making short a higher frequency high frequency pulses out of it, we have we have to do the opposite. Where we're given our we're given pulses and for every four pulses they give us, the um we should have a, a full wave com a full wave coming out, which is a crest in a trough. So the first one turns it on, second one is ignored, third one turns it off, the fourth one is ignored. The fifth one, which is after four pulses, it turns on again. And so on and so forth. So because we're given a we're given a pulse to turn on and a pulse to turn off, we are we'll the solution to this chip is by use by using the memory cell. But then we have to differentiate which pulses turn on and which pulses turn off. So I'll just make a memory cell here, and I'll make the wave shortener so it doesn't kill its own signal when um it feeds back into the um. It feeds back into the um, mechanism which differentiates between a set and a reset. So here we have your average run of the mill memory cell, which, which for every pulse, for the first pulse that goes in, it turns on, second pulse turns off, and so on and so forth and that divides its frequency by 2, but we don't want that, we want to divide it by 4. So technically, yes, we could feed this into another wave shortener and put this into another memory cell, but there is a, another way which I'll show you which reduces the um, delay even further and saves you having to put your signal through another wave shortener. Because this activates on the first this activates on the first and third pulses this because it turns these pulses on it turns this on, the second one turns it off and so on and so forth this one, which I'll give you the input here just so happens to fit perfectly where where the pulses, where our um, required output turns off and off, um, on and off and so then we just need to feed that into another um, set reset differentiator. So we're not actually going to be at attaching it to the state of the primary memory cell. That's just to um, that's just to complete the um, the mechanism by which we can differentiate between set and reset um, signals. So we do have a bit of delay, but not much you can do about that. So we'll go on to the 4 to 1 multiplexer as the next level, and I'll just edit this bit out. The 4 to 1 multiplexer. So basically here, we have S0 and S1, which are which can take four different states, both off, both on, either one on, and whenever and depending on the combination of s0 s1 we had, we can we can make we can address which which um state we want to go through so when s0 and s1 are both off um we will only be considering the um signal of a going through to z and so when a so when s0 and s1 are both off both off, which would address it to A. When A is off, no signal goes through to Z. When A is on, the signal goes through to Z. And um, the same process for B, C and D, but with different combinations of S0 and S1. 
Fortunately, it's only 4 bits. This is not like the 8-bit addressable SRAM, which is incredibly tedious. So this is, so this is. I'll just show you the the concept of the address. Oops. And S zero is. Wait, S zero is both off here. Oops. Again. S zero is on. S one is off. S one is on. S zero is off, and both are on. Wait a sec. Yes, that's right. So we'll be attaching S0 to this. So basically what's happening here is that I've just created all four possible combinations of S0 and S1 and every single um every single combination will give will will um gi give a signal to a specific pin. So this one will only be on fr flowing from the um the um it the pa the power supply only when S0 and S1 are both off and this one when both on and this one these two are when S0 and S1 are off, on, off, off, on, whatever. So basically this looks a bit like deja vu but I can't remember the level. So basically we have, wait that was a 2 to 4 line bit decoder so now whenever we have, so now we have a unique signal going to each gate specifying which which line we want to open wait a sec, how do I do this again? Um, I can't remember which way it went but Either it was this it was this way or the other way. I could be spending a few minutes just fluffing around here doing nothing. Wait a sec. I'm going a bit over, but anyway. I just test this. If it comes up really bad, then. Oh, yes, this is the bad combination, so I just have to reverse it. Yeah, so um, you could see there that um, that the um, gate delays were seriously messing with the design. So this is why I've reversed the um, the collectors and the bases. Because the um, A, B, C, and D are not affected by um, the delay that these suffer from, which means that 
which means that they'll go through just fine into the base and it won't allow stray signals through whereas if we were to reverse it where this is the base and that is the emitter if um that if that um the base were to tr turn off but it's delayed by these by the address then you can get stray signals going through like there So that is the 4 to 1 multiplexer. So that, that's the, that is the, what was it again, um, f divide by 4 counter and the 4 to 1 multiplexer. So I'll see you in the next episode.